Hello everyone, welcome to Coders Camp. We are at 11th day of June, the code challenge and the problem we are going to cover in this video is Stone Game 7. The problem statement says Alice and Bob take turns playing the stone game and Alice start first as usual as per any other stone game problems. So here they said there are young stones arranged in a row and that is given as an integer array and on each player's turn they can remove either the leftmost stone or the rightmost stone and we calculate the core of each player by equal to the sum of the remaining stones in the row and as usual Bob is going to lose the game so he decided to minimize the scores difference but Alice's goal is to maximize the score difference so finally if they both play optimally we have to return the score difference between Alice and Bob so let's understand this with an example so here is a given example in the problem statement and as per the problem statement Alice is going to start the game and he can take either the leftmost or the rightmost stone from the row. So now he is going to take the rightmost stone which is of value 2 because if he takes the minimum value then his score is going to get maximum. So now Alice's score is sum of the rest of the stones so that is going to become 13. And now it's Bob's turn and Bob is planning to take the leftmost stone which is of value 5. So the sum is 3 plus 1 plus 4 which is 8. And now again the Alice turn and now he is going to remove the stone 3 so that the sum becomes 5. And out of 1 and 4 Bob is planning to remove 1 so that the score is 4. So overall the score of Alice is going to be 18 and score of Bob is going to be 12 and the difference is actually going to be 6. That is what we are going to return. it. So how are we going to approach this? So here in the problem statement they have given two hints. The first hint says it is going to be small enough for an n square solution. Also they suggested us to try a dynamic programming. So we are going to go for a DP solution. So let us get into the concept. So we all know dynamic programming is nothing but solving each sub problem and then getting a bigger solution from those results. So we are going to start from a very base case. For example, consider there is only one stone A. And Alice is going to pick the stone A. In that case, after he picks the stone, there is nothing left in the row. So his score is anyway going to be zero. So next consider there are two stones A and B. If Alice is planning to pick the stone, which one would he pick? So if uh, A is having the higher value and B is having the lesser value, then he would pick the lesser value one because he want to maximize his score. So if he pick the lesser value one, then he will get the higher value stone as his score. So obviously he's going to pick the lesser value one, then his score or the overall score of this game is going to be max of a comma b because he would be picking the lesser one and the score will become the maximum one so if either b is maximum he'll pick a and b is the score if a is maximum he'll pick b and a is the score so hope you're understanding this so next moving on to three stones if there are three stones and alice is planning to pick one so in that case, he has two options to pick. Either he can pick A or C. If suppose we fix that he is picking A. In that case, his score will actually become B plus C. And now we have only B and C left. So in B and C, Bob has to pick one. So out of B and C, he wants to maximize his score. So in that case, he would be picking the minimum one out of B and C and his score will be the maximum value. So out of B and C, whichever is the max would be the score of Bob. So B plus C is the score of Alice and it will, it will be subtracted from Bob's score. So Bob's score would be max of B and C. So this is coming from the previous subproblems solution that is a and B can be solved as max of A and B. Same way, after picking A, only B and C left. So B and B, B and C can be solved as max of B and C. So overall, it is nothing but 
Alice score, that is sum of whatever he picked minus max of the leftover stones. But this is not end with here. This has another option that is what if Alice picks C. In that case, the score is going to become A plus B, which is nothing but the leftover stone after picking C. So this is the score of Alice. And now Bob has options to pick either A or B and get his score. So in that case, Bob would opt to pick the lesser stone value so that his score get maximized. So again, it is coming like max of A comma B would be the score of Bob. So overall, it is going to give us Alice score minus Bob score. So these two can be the possible solution for A, B and C. And we have to either pick one. So which one would we pick? We want to return the maximum score difference. So out of these two options, we would be picking whichever is the max. So overall, to solve A, B, C, we would be pick max of B plus C minus max of B comma C or A plus B minus max of A comma B. So hope you are understanding this and this problem is going to go like this. So again, the last one is for A, B, C, D. It is nothing but the sum of rest of the elements if he pick A minus max of B, C, D, comma, A plus B plus C. If means if he pick D, it is A plus B plus C. That is sum of rest of the stones minus max of A, B, C. And it goes on like this. So this is going to be the solution for each sub problem. And we are going to derive our DP pattern based on this. So simply we are going to check every time this pattern for every i that is nothing but we are going to have a dp array which is going to store the solution for each sub problem that is dp of 0 is going to have for only one stone or the first stone in the given array and so on and n will have the dp of splitting all possible stones given in the input. So finally we are going to return what is there in this cell that nothing but dp of n minus 1. So now to do this we are going to get the help of a prefix sum array. As we all know prefix sum is nothing but calculating the sum so far to that point in an array. So we are going to first calculate the prefix sum of all the elements in given in the stone array and we are going to calculate these sums by using that prefix sum which is nothing but if there are four stones then to calculate this sum, we are going to cut off the leftmost element and add the rest, which is nothing but the sum of D minus sum of A. Same way to calculate ABC, we are going to take the sum till C. If there is a sum calculated till D, we are going to ignore the last cell. Whatever till C, we are going to take that from our prefix sum. To calculate the max of BCD and max of ABC and stuff, this is the value actually we're going to store in our DP array. So for DP of 0, it is going to be 0 because that is the base case. To, for B, DP of A comma B, max of A comma B will be stored. And this we are going to use in the next sub problem. Same way, once this is this sub problem is solved, its solution is going to be used for the next sub problem and so on. So hope you're understanding this solution. This is obviously going to work in big O of n square time as given in the hint. So let's go to the code now. So yes, let me declare n as the size of our stones array as we are going to use this variable often. And my dp. I'm going to have two for loops i and j and i is going to point at the end of the given array and j is going to point at the beginning of the given array so that we will negotiate or cut down the end and the starting by using these variables. And we are going to check if our i is not equal to j, which means we are not pointing at the same stone. 
then in that case we are going to calculate our prefix sum that is sum so far and as i said we are going to calculate our dp is equal to max of a minus temp and b minus dp of j so here a is nothing but we are going to pre calculate the value which is sum minus stones of j which is nothing but the first set of values the first prefix sum and also b is nothing but sum minus stones of i that is cutting the first and last value so a is sum cutting the end value and b is sum cutting the start, starting value so here it is a and b minus i said dp of j is going to have the previous solution of our sub problem so once we update its value it is going to change for the second sub problem so we are going to have a temporary variable to store the previous value so that we can use it here for the calculation so i'm going to declare every time a temp variable and because it has to consider the i as well so every time we are going to calculate a new dp we are going to update our temp value so that we will use this in our next iteration so yes once iteration is done our dp of n minus 1 is going to have the result so yes this is it let's run and try So yes, let's submit. Yes, the solution is accepted and runs in 28 millisecond, which is 92 percent faster than other solutions. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you like this video. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe, and let me know in comments. Thank you.